Hi guys, I wanted to make a quick update video on our last video we've did. Um, two things. One, I've made a mistake, so I want to correct that. And two, I think we can smoothen out the process even more and we can actually start assigning while we're at it the joystick buttons to our rotary movements. We can actually use it in game already if you'd like. So it's going to be a bit more detailed than last video and we're going to correct some things we did wrong. So in the first place, what did we do wrong in the last video? Well, apparently, I'm going to grab an overview of the Leonardo. Perhaps you rem rem uh, remember that we used the SCL and SDA inputs for our LCD screen, right? Oh, and we used the second and third, or the third and fourth, not quite sure, for our rotary encoder. Apparently, these inputs interfere with the output of the SCL and the SDA. So if we would rotate the rotary encoder over here, it would get buggy over here and show you incorrect data and even crash over time when uh, you keep turning it. So I thought my rotary encoder was broken because I did some stupid stuff with it. And yes, I still did some stupid stuff with it, but it was just my, my own fault that I shouldn't have used these ports. So to correct that, we could just plug them in, let's say 10, 11, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, anything <laughs> except these lower ones. So I just wanted to correct that so we know that it works. I will show you a working example at the end of the video to see what it will eventually look like. So don't worry, we will all get it. So if we go back to our actual board, you'll see that right now if I start turning it, it goes up by one, two, three, four, five, etc. I'm a lot smoother than the last video. Um, and just by changing the pins, this is how you achieve it. Um, and also this is running this a bit improved code, which I'm going to explain um, after this segment. But as you can see, we can go up, we can go down. Uh, perhaps you've noticed that the zero stays in place. And that's because we don't override the entire line. We just write where new line is entered. So right now, if we do minus one, minus two, etc., cetera, um, it will carry over and this will just stay in place until we write something over it. So if we're actually going to use it in our code, we need to take care of that. And as you can see, it used to be on the three and four, I believe, or the two and three. And now we've placed it in the 10 and 11 and everything is working smooth. So right now we have our three and four still assigned. So I'm going to change that up. I've changed it on my board to 10 and 11. Uh, the switch is still the same. That's no issue. Let me see. Yeah, okay. So we need to change the pins. You have to change it accordingly to the pin you select on your own board. So if you go with 8 and 9, this should be 8 and 9 and not 10 and 11, of course. But what else can we do to update our code a bit to make it more precise? Because sometimes you get off readings right now that it's going to think that something changed while the, it, it really didn't, just an inch or a millimeter movement that is being translated to an entire click. So we're going to try to change something about this. Okay. A state is digital reads. Rotary pin A. As we remembered, we said that the current state of A, so the A pin of the rotary encoder, is whatever gets read from pin A. And we say if the current state is different than the last state, something's changed, right? And that part is correct. But that also means that if the movement isn't completely made, so half a step, like you move it just a little bit of an inch too far, far it still gets counted as an entire step because something changed. So we're going to try to make it only work when an entire step is made. 
what we're going to do is we're going to first find that everything is low at the start. Nothing has been turned, nothing is moving, no signals are booing, uh, being sent in or going out. So we just put everything on low. And in our if statement, we say if, um, how did we call it, the a lost state. If a lost state is equal to low, which it will always be in the beginning. And, and we say and encoding by typing two of the end signs. I'm not sure how they're called, but. And we say a state, so the current state is equal to Hi. So in practice, this means if the first last one is actually low, and we've went the whole place that is going to be like the whole state is high, we're going to do something. And what are we going to do? We are going to check if. Our oh, pin B is equal to low. Oh, that's not low, that's low. So look out to correctly place the brackets. As you can see up here, we've actually defined the if, we opened the bracket, so this is the if statement. And the first parameter we've put between the brackets and the second parameter just to enclose it. But in this case, why do we check that if it's low? That means that if the full movement has been made, that A is high and B is low. So nothing in between, just the full movement that we want to capture. And in that case, we do counter minus minus and anything else, we do counter plus plus. Let me remove this. Uh, let me see, did I close it properly? Yeah, we did. And once again, in the end, we say that the last state is now the current states. So now we've changed from just checking if something's changed to check if the full step of the rotary encoder has changed and nothing in between. And this will give us a much clearer one step at a time for our LCD screen. Okay, so now we've got our sensors working. It, it, it will detect it as counting. Um, I believe we actually even did lcd.cursor. So we place the cursor at zero. lcd.print counter. Uh, oh, sorry, already I overlooked it. It's over here where it's supposed to be and not over here. Okay, so we've got everything working. So what are we gonna do now? We're gonna include a library again. If you don't have the library already, I will leave a link in the download description below. You can go to, you download the code or the library, you go to sketch, include library, and then add zip library and then navigate to wherever you're downloaded it, and then you can just import it and use it. And if you've imported it, you can go to sketch, include library, and we're looking for the HID project. Same one as we used last project with the toggle box. We're gonna use it for the radio as well. You see, it automatically includes two files. So 
So what do we need for the gamepad to be used? Well, at first we need to declare a gamepad. So inside the setup block, we define gamepad dot begin. Easy as that. And in theory, you could say, well, if I want it to go down, I want gamepad dot press, let's say one. And if I want to go up, I want to say gamepad dot press two. And then I'll do gamepad dot write, because we need to write, tell the system, okay, we actually want to execute this button press. So we're going to do the same here. And that's it. Well, first of all, we never do anything uh, about releasing the button. So right now, if you go down, it will keep pushing the one. If you go up, it will keep pushing the two. So you need to work something out. And the second part is that you actually want to keep this part of the code as empty as possible. And the reason behind it is that this keeps running and checking to see if the counter goes up. If you rotate fast, it will uh, execute very fastly, etc. And it needs it needs to keep its head straight on just executing where it's meant for, and it is just for counting up or down, and that's it. So nothing more should be in here. Um, and we're going to change actually that is counting, but we will, we will see later on. So as you can see, we have our void setup and we have a void loop. We can actually create a block of code of our own. So if you say void press button, and as you can see, it looks the same as our void loop. We have void, we have a name, we have these brackets, and we have an opening and an ending. And in the void loop, this is empty, and in the void setup, this is empty as well. In our case, we want something to tell this code block, okay, I need to press a button. But this code block also needs to know which button it needs to press. So we need a parameter. And in this case, let's just call it int button. So what does this mean? Okay, we can remove this, we can remove that. So what should happen if it's low? Well, we should press button. And now the system will call this block of code to be executed. But as we can see, it requires parameter between the brackets, just as we have brackets here, we can say one. So now it will call this block of code and pass along the one that's requested over here. So we do the same for two, and we will define what will happen in this block of code. So we'll say gamepad.press. And it could be any number because we don't know which one is calling this. So we say button. So now the system knows I get called, I get past the parameter, and I'm going to use that parameter to press. So we press one. Now our system knows, okay, call this block of code with the number one, gamepad.press one. Now we need to write it. And as you note, do you see now the common theme of these brackets? So it's a block of code that gets called, in this case, write function. We didn't write it because it's in the library, but the block of code gets called and it doesn't provide any parameters as of now. So we pass a parameter. Uh, no, we don't have to press a parameter because this is it. 
And for stability, we actually need uh, to add a delay. I'm quickly going to take a peek at what which delay I've used, because that's it, it's a bit of a process of trial and error on which kind of delay works best. Um, so I've went with delay 45 milliseconds, microsecond, milliseconds, yeah. Um, so when this gets executed, it gets written to the gamepad and it will delay our program for 45 milliseconds. And why do we do that? So it has time to process what is actually happening. Because if you keep calling this, um, it's going to be too much. Our system can't really cope um, with the button presses and they don't get written to the system, etc. And our in-game, nothing changes about our button states. So let's see if we actually can release the buttons. Because we want the, like if you rotate the encoder, we want to have like ticks. It goes like turn, 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 turn. So it isn't one continuous state of turning and not turning because we want to actually have a kind of a difference between fast turns and slow turns. And I think I found the way I use it right now, it's kind of a basic way. It's by just releasing it every, um, every few seconds. So how can we do that? Well, this block of code gets executed every time. So if we just start by adding gamepad dot release all gamepad dot write. So every time this code block gets executed, and this is a continuous process, we just clear our presses and we write that to the system. So we say, okay, now nothing is pressed anymore and go on. And then it goes to check again. Okay, something moving. If it's moving, press one, delay for the 45 seconds, and then we go back to the loop again and uh, go around circles and keep going around in circles until we've actually stopped the program. So now we've pressed one, press two, and we've released them. So that's pretty straightforward so far. And we can actually already use this in game if you'd like. So let me see if I can hook up my Arduino. Here we go, we upload our code. I've made a mistake. Ah, I forgot a closing bracket right here. So as we can see, I will show you how it looks in the in in Windows itself because it will give a clear overview what is actually happening. Okay. So, in theory, we could. See, if I turn it one side, it goes tick, 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 tick. And on the other side, tick, 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 tick. So that's exactly what we wanted. And in game, you could just bind, let's say, um, altimeter increase to two, decrease to one, and tune it to your own liking as you'd prefer. And as you can see, it's quite smooth. I've noticed that when I've put on a knob, sometimes it jumps back, but that's just because I'm stupid and I uh, <laughs> use my big fingers to turn it back a notch. So it just goes a bit bing bing, like a bouncing tennis ball, but that's just user error. So it should all work fine. And that's how you can actually hook up your rotary encoder already to your game. The LCD, um, it's a bit obsolete 